please rise. Thou art. 
morning and God bless you. Thank you very much for your show of support to this mother and father during this precious time. The gift of life is only given by God and it is well received. Scripture says, have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. But to those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Romans 8 goes on to say, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height, nor depth, nor any other creature, nor any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we truly thank you for this time 
in so much as we identify that you are with us, you are present, and you have provided a moment, dear God, wherein we can take time to reflect, take time to honor, take time, even in our weakness, to gain strength. Father, we have many, certainly among this family, that are hurting, they are grieved, they are searching, wonders and questions. But Lord, we know that you have the answers to them all. So Lord, we reach to you even right now that you would measure the appropriateness of strength and answers of peace that the joy may be renewed. For the loss of one, O oh Father, brings much, but you bring much more. We ask, Lord, that you would honor this moment and this time, Lord, by using us to bring encouragement, to be able to lean on one another, and to allow the rest in your arms to be our comfort, even in this moment, even in this time, as we prepare for the moments yet ahead. God, be the indulge of peace for this family and their soulless in Jesus' name. Amen.
take the time before we call Levi up to thank everyone for coming to be in great support of this family of this mother and father have great need in this time such a precious gift of life has been given in such a short moment it was also taken God has purpose for everything under the sun and so while we grieve we are yet called to celebrate the celebration is for the life that has been taken or that has been given. Amen. Evangelina Elizabeth Marie Harper, such a precious babe sitting with all the efforts of struggle that she uh, put forth in living. Amen. You could see the joy in that effort. And it's a great testament of what God even calls for us to do. As a mother and a father, they took time to be the strength for their child, be the strength, be the voice, the undergirding for their baby. And your show of support here is as well a witness to the great love that God has given us to be that for one another. Amen. Brother Levi. Thank you all for coming out. I'm just going to start off. Always wanted a family. To me, that was something that taught and undaunted. A great man told me, a man is nothing without a family. Eva gave me a mission and reminded me of who I could be even further. Regardless of what we were told by doctors, I believed in my family. When I saw her born, she was so beautiful. When we had our first scare in the middle of the night, I still believed. After she left, I watched McKenna wash her little body. I still believed. Moments like this remind us that we're alive. I believe she is here and there. There will be a better tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Brother Levi. It was a tremendous strength shown to come before this assembly. And to be able to express from your heart, amen, the feeling of content and even despair in this time. Amen. On behalf of Rivers of Living Water, our senior pastor, Bishop Johnny Rivera, and First Lady Myra the executive staff, members and family, and certainly from my wife, Linda, and myself. It's an honor to stand here before you, but it's also a struggle. So again, we do thank you for coming out and showing your love and your support unto each of the family members. And in honor of them, we're going to ask that um, uh, Brother 
Donald Hustetler and our billing. You come at this time. Levi and McKenna, thank you for this privilege. Even though we're not Eva's real great-grandparents, she's very much our great-granddaughter in our heart and has been. And we've been with you on this, this journey. And since McKenna, you gave us strict time limit, we <coughs> wrote things out so that we can still honor that limit. Evangelina, Eva, was only with us for five days, but in that short time, she touched so many people. She touched the lives of my women's Bible study group. She touched the lives of those in our Sunday school class. She touched the lives of my Salvation Army friends all across this country. More importantly, she touched the lives of her parents, her grandparents, and her great-grandparents. In everyone's <coughs> prayers for Eva and her family, she brought countless folks into the presence of our Lord. That's quite an accomplishment for one little baby girl. In her short life, she made a special place in her mom and dad's heart for herself creating memories that will someday become precious memories. Her parents, who loved her so deeply, went the extra mile to see to it that they gave their little baby girl every chance for life, knowing the reality of grief that likely awaited them. To love is to leave oneself open to hurt, the loss of a loved one is a special pain. We call it grief. Grief lays heavy on the human soul because it mourns a loss which cannot be restored. Evangelina left too soon and was held by too few. It is a tragic loss we cannot undo. And it leaves us asking too many questions that simply do not have good answers. Now, there are ways to process grief. Helen Kubler-Ross wrote a best-selling book about the five stages of grief processing. McKenna and Levi, we don't pretend to offer you wise words or rosy prescriptions to relieve your pain. There are no fancy named medicines like those advertised on TV that can make you feel better. But we do have words of encouragement. I don't know about you, but I remember when I was a kid and got hurt, I often go to mom and ask her to kiss it and make it better. Mind you, her kiss didn't make the pain go away, didn't make the wounds stop bleeding, didn't eliminate the bump on the skull, but kissing made it better. Today, those who love you have gathered around you to kiss it and make it better. It does not eliminate the grief. In fact, this gathering may actually recall and heighten the pain of your loss. But we encourage you to receive the gentle kiss of shared grief and love behind it so as to make it better. We also remind you of what you already know. Jesus said that those who mourn are blessed. Not blessed by their grief, but blessed by the comfort that comes from knowing that they are in the hands of a God who loves them and cares for them. The psalmist said that sorrow lasts for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Admittedly, some nights are longer than others. But be assured that the grief you feel is not permanent. The joy is yet to come. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, that you can cast all your cares, worries, anxieties, pain, you can cast it all on God because he cares for you. These are the ways that the Bible tells us that a loving God will kiss it and make it better. 
McKenna and Levi, we pray that you will experience the love that we all have for you both as we share your grief and try to kiss it and make it better. words, Dulce and Kevin. To know me know I love Harry Potter. But Ken and I even have matching tattoos of the Elder Wand, and I started that tattoo addiction. <laughs> the other night, as I lay listening to a mix of music from the movies, one came across that I had never paid attention to before. Setting the scene, Harry, along with Hermione, were in Godric's Hollow on Christmas Eve. They know it's Christmas Eve by the song being sung by the attendees. My love is always here is a song depicting this nativity. Oh, sleep, sweet babe, though the snow is cold and deep around. Just sleep, dear babe, through the, wind, through the winds so keen and icy sound. Oh, hush, sweet babe, there is nothing you should fear. Just hush, dear babe, for my love is always here. And I will hold you safe in my arms so no evil can touch you. You can come to no harm. Wake now, dear babe. Now the night is nearly through. Wake now, dear, wake now, sweet babe. There's a world that's waiting here for you. Sweet baby girl, Angelina. This world will always be waiting to see you again. We may not, we may not be able to hold you in our arms right now. But one day, you will, you will be greeting each and every one of us. We only had a few days with you. You fought so hard to give us those days. Thank you. We had what myself and the nurses dubbed our morning tea time, sitting with you before the hustle and bustle of the ICN, enjoying the peace and stillness. Thank you for that time. There was one day you were three days old, and I just needed a place of quiet. That's hard to find in the hospital. I wandered, and as the chaplain said, I went on a pilgrimage. That pilgrimage saw me to the chapel. There I spent several hours looking for verses that laid on my heart. The book of Psalms found me. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. This verse has spoken to me since. We love you, Eva. There will always be a spot in my heart for you. As Sirius Black told Harry, the ones that love us never leave us, and you can always find them here in our hearts. Good morning, heartache. You're like an old friend. Come and see me again. The first time I heard Tim Armstrong sing those words, they spoke to my experience as a musician and a poet that is most creative when delving into emotion. Now, now when I hear those words, they bring me a strange sort of peace and comfort. A peace that heartache lessens with time and a comfort in knowing that this heartache serves to cement into memory an overabundance of love and joy that only the birth of a child can bring. A comfort that one small angel can shine so bright that even though I was far off working to support my family and unable to be there to meet her in person, her light could touch my heart and wrap me in the same joy and love that she brought to her mother, her father, her bumble, who were there with her from the beginning. Evangelina, you are my little angel and our brightly shining star. You rose on the winds of hopes and dreams, and you linger on 
with the power of memory, and there you will shine, blazing and shimmering for all to see. Yet you will be shining your angelic beauty specifically for your family. Amen. Again, more touching words. Mr. Kevin White, will you come at this time? I was blessed when I had three daughters, and then I was blessed again with four bonus children. One here that I affectionately call Shorty, even though she may be taller than me. When McKenna, when McKenna announced to me that she was pregnant with the Angelina, I was happy she shared her joy. When Eva came into this world, I knew the struggles that we were facing, and all I could do was be a comfort to McKenna and Eva. Evangelina, that precious little baby, made me swell with love when I laid my eyes on her. And when her time came to be with the Lord, I felt honored that I got to hold that precious child. Eva will always have a place in my heart, and while I know that she is safe with the Savior's arms, I cannot wait to see her again when my time on earth is done. I am, I am also so amazed at Leva and McKenna, the struggles of the t this time I would not wish on anyone. And I honestly believe that very few would be able to handle what they are going through. To Mac and Levi, I thank you for your steadfastness, strength, and the love you show. I pray that you will find peace and comfort. If you would have told me in 1989 that uh, this sailor would someday be speaking in front of a bunch of soldiers, I might not have told so many <laughs> army jokes. The presence of all here is a testament to the meaning of being a brother's and sister's keeper. Evangelina was carried away into the Savior's arms on March 17th. Her moment on this earth touched my heart. I never knew I could feel a lifetime of love from just a small moment. While I was looking for something to say today, I sat along with a quote by Latoya Allison. Loss is only temporary when you believe in God. I only held Ava for a moment, but she'll always be in my heart. I just hope that when I leave this earth, I'll be given grace to watch Eva run in the fields of Ava. <laughs> Chasing fireflies. Memorials are a reminder to those of us still living of things that matter. They remind us of sacrifices made and terrible tragedies that happened, but they also remind us of bravery, honesty, and overcoming obstacles. One thing I know I'll remember is the example of love that McKenna and Levi have for Evangelina. When the diagnosis came, they understood but still had hope. When the baby was born, they gave her the best fighting chance that anyone could. And through that moment, they constantly told Evangelina how much they loved her. Ava came into this earth hearing, I love you, from her parents, and left this earth with the parents telling her, I love you. It is very rare to see this amazing example of love. I know I will cherish in my heart the example that they are giving to us. McKenna, my baby girl, and Levi, I am truly blessed to have you in my life, and I thank you for the example of love that you have shown. And while I haven't been beautiful in prayer, 
I pray that the Lord will comfort you and that his blessings will overflow. Amen. Glory to God. What love. What precious love. The gift of love is what we have received from God. And in many moments that are yet to come, we will experience this love even more. Levi and McKenna, much more love is being extended to you, even in these moments, and the more moments that come ahead. We've heard many accounts of the examples of love that Ava has reflected. Uh, the gift that God has given through her life is indeed evangelic. <laughs> it's more than we can embrace, more than we can um, More, can we can, more than we can take on. Having the privilege of meeting and communicating with both McKenna and Levi on previous occasions, I've come to appreciate some of the struggles and some of the shared moments of praise in their lives. Both have military service under their belt, and even now, they're among those ranks, defending our country from enemies, both foreign and domestic. And then acknowledging some personal battles as they well have joined the soldier, the soldiering ranks in the army. Needless to say, or they, they joined the soldiering army of the Lord. <laughs> Bless the Lord. The soldiers in the army of the Lord. There it is. Bless the Lord. Listen, uh, it's needless to say that they are among the busiest soldiers in today's society contending with as many battles as there are fronts. And to this, I humbly submit, thank you for your service. My wife and I, my wife and Linda and I, can now say that we, we've met with two great people with whom we've come to appreciate having in our lives. This said, we extend our condolences from our family, along with those of your extended family, here at Rivers of Living Water, Church of God. Again, from our senior pastor, Dr. Johnny Rivera and First Lady Myra, the entire executive staff, and to, and to our many members and friends. As it is fitting not to labor before you long, yet capture the sentiment of need in our gathering for support of this mother and father today, I would like to share with you a brief story of another's experience. This story captures the testament of a family who had a set of twins born into their family. One of the twins had some problems at birth, and so it sent the child home many weeks after their birth. Wherein the doctor gave them instructions of danger signs to look for. Having been warned of the wrong signs to look for, however, unfortunately, the baby died. They only spent five weeks living. The father shares that it was indeed hard to lose their son, but they also knew that God had a plan for their son's death. Early on, having been warned or made aware of the possibility of a short life after birth, Levi made a similar statement regarding the knowledge that God had a plan and that he knew that even if Eva did not make it, if she did not stay, if she did not endure, if God called her home, that would, it would be because God had a reason. Just the same, both McKenna and Levi both expressed faith in God through prayer 
to sustain, give his life. So the testament of this father continues as it conveys how their local fire department responded to the emergency call for their son. They came well equipped, he says, to save lives, though without the ability to save their own son. Everything within their supplies was for that of an adult. So much to their surprise and disbelief, they were unable to help this family's son. In the words of the father, our son proved to be a witness to the members of the fire department that their need yet was for the Lord. You see, God has a divine purpose for everything. Ecclesiastes 3 says that there is a timeless season for everything. While we are restricted by the boundary of time, the, we frame longevity with a different purpose than shortness, thus minimizing one from the other depending on its relevance to our own need. God is not limited by the boundary of time. In fact, our moment of a day is as a thousand years to God. So using a text from 2 Kings 4, I'd like to capture four points for you today to bring the point of reflection home. First, there's the wish of a mother. <laughs> See, Elisha was a man of God who traveled the country to spread the word of God, like that of today's evangelist. During these travels, he would often need a place to stay. While he was ministering, he encountered a particular couple who would often give him some room to sleep. This couple had no children. In a response to the couple's generosity, the prophet Elisha offered to do something for the couple. He inquired of the servant. He said that they wanted a child. Scripture says in 2 Kings 4, And he said to them, Say now to her, Look, you have been concern for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi, the servant, said, well, actually, she has no son, and her husband is old. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son after he had called her to, her to his assembly. Having called her to the assembly and she stood in the doorway, he advised her, prophesied into her life that God said, he will give her a son. No, my Lord, she responded. Man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. You see, she thought he was lying about something that was so precious and dear to his heart or to her heart. She believed him to be a man of God, but didn't believe God to be able to give her a child in this stage of life. Brings me to point number two. We read on in verses 17 through 18, a mother's joy, saying that she indeed did bear a son, as Elijah said she would, and in the time specified. I'm sure the celebration was monumental, having spent many years alive to the point that they were, in her mind, past childbearing years. So the question here is, what do you believe in God for? Rather, what have you resigned your hope from due to a lack of patience, belief, and trust in God? Now take that to the next level. How about if God answered that request for you today? Well, here it says in the text that the child grew, he worked the field with his father, things were going all right until one day the boy came, declaring his head was hurting. So he was taken to the house to be with his mother. Scripture says that the boy fell sick and later he died. Once the boy cried repeatedly about his head hurting, the servant was instructed to carry the boy into his mother and held, she held him on her knees until midday. There in her lap, he passed on. Now you have this mother who carried on in her mind until after her bearing years, along comes a prophet declaring that she will have a child. A year later, there he was, a reason to celebrate. She nurtured him until growing, grown enough to help dad in the fields, and then out of nowhere, gone. Life taken. Her joy in jeopardy. Well, what happened? It's a great question. I knew you'd ask. Before I answer that question, I will tell you, or I would ask you, what would you do? What would you do? All you've been dreaming of, waiting for, even promised, now is here. 
the job or position gained, that wayward child is lost in darkness, now found and walking in the light. How about being confused in your own Christian walk? You're leaning, you're yearning for an increase of awareness as to what God would have you to do. And now your delight is in the law of the Lord. You're searching for meaning. You're searching for purpose. You're searching in the Lord through fasting and prayer. And the Lord grants you favor, hallelujah, for a visitation of the Holy Spirit through a vision, followed by a grant through Lee University to go to full seminary for the full scholarship. Whoops. Wait a minute. Then the sky falls in. Bankruptcy comes. Child gets caught up with the wrong crowd. Jail is next. You lose your temper, go to the job, you get fired. Another faith shakes your understanding. Now you're walking with Muslims. Lee University discredits your application and it's on a technicality. Well, no more scholarship. What do you do? This Shunammite woman said that she wasn't about to give in. See, she laid down and she laid her son down in the upstairs room where they had laid for the prophet's room. And she went on a campaign, a mission to find him. I'm talking here about unshakable faith, steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. No matter what they say about me, no matter if they look at me in the prison, Paul said, no, I heard he was singing in the shackles. See, if they lock me in the prison, I'm still going to sing. No matter what happens to me, I'm still going to press on. See, I bet it sounded something like this. He's so good to me, I cannot tell it all. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. That way, that is why I love him so. He's so good to me. He said, Paul said, I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. Not God loving me. Rather, God won't stop. He won't stop now loving you. But Paul is saying he will let nothing get away get in the way of him loving the Lord. See, he said, my faith in God is not for sale. It's not for trade. There's no bargaining. There's no buyout. No, sir, I'm sold out. Well, the Shunammite women went there to where the man of God was to get his help. She went to Mount Carmel. Thus, point number four. Here's where, we land. Here's where we land, at a mother's hope. If you read the text, it'll tell you she dropped down to Elisha's feet and gripped on like a hair in a biscuit or like a feather in a hat. Choose your favorite expression. I'd like to use the one that says, like my foot on the enemy's bruised head. Hallelujah. And he's staying down there in the ouch position. This woman was not about to let her hope go to waste. Not into the wakes basket, nor going to hell in a hand basket. Look, I know you're hurting. I know that you've got questions. I know your piece of life is like a pecan pie with a hole in the middle of like a moldy worm has crawled in and, crawled in and is kind of shaking it and destroyed that pecan pie. You see no hope to grab your fork and dig in again. But I'm telling you today, there's hope in the arms of Jesus. If you know where to go, you can go on what you know. This woman went to find the arms of the man of God. It came in the form of Elisha. So she fell down with all that she had. She held on to her with her heart. She held on with her hands. She, with all of her might, held on to him and said, I'm not going to let you go. Sounds like someone else I know. Joshua, amen, or Jacob, held on to the angel. Said, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. She held on so tight that the servant couldn't pull her off. I know if you read the text, it'll say that the servant reached down to try to grab and separate her from Elisha. But Elisha said, oh no, leave her alone. She has a burden. She has a despair. She has something in her heart that is overwhelming. And we need to know what it is. That's just like my Jesus. He's just like your Jesus. He's reaching down to keep you from the ultimate despair and being lost in that despair. Scripture tells me that Elisha put on the hush of the servant and said, leave her be. Jesus will put a hold on the enemy's feet, stops him dead in his trap. Why? Because he's our paraclete. He's our, he's our counselor. He's our guide. The song says he's like a lawyer in a courtroom. He's like a doctor in the operating room. He's like a rock in the weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. No, he'll never leave you lonely, even when there's no one else around. 
He's the mender of your broken heart. He, well, that's why they call him the great I am. You can call him. Call him up. He's right on time. Again, back to our text. The Shunammite woman saw her son prophesied, materialize, and then he died. But she still never lost hope. It did not ruin her faith. In fact, she told her husband everything's all right after she had went up and laid her son down in the bed. She went out to Elijah and called him back to the house. She told him, I'm not going to leave you. You can carry on if you want to, but I'll be right here holding on. So Elijah said, well, all right. And we're paraphrasing. Let me take you. Go on, take me to your house. He went up to the room where the boy lay dead, and he stretched himself on the boy. Nose to nose, eye to eye, hands to hand. The body's boy. For the boy of the body grew warm. Yet he laid still in death's arms. It says that Elisha paced the room back and forth, and they went and did it again. He lay stretched out across the boy. Nose to nose, eye to eye, hands to hand. The boy sneezed seven times, got up with life again. He called the mother up to the room and said, take up your son. Now, I know you're looking, the whispers might be tangling in your ear and the, the lighting calling a little louder because I just read you about a happy story. So what is the answer here? Again, great question. Let me tell you something. The moral of the story here is that God is saying to you, first of all, that all things work together for good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose. And while it sounds crass, the fact is it's not about us. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about the preacher, not about the teacher. You see, it's a tough pill to swallow, or to, to, to swallow, but God knows, he cares, and he comes to see about us right where we are. In his divine will, we live, we move, we breathe, we have our being, which is why the scripture in Matthew says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. When we come to Jesus, repent of our sins, acknowledge him as our Lord and our Savior, believing that he died on a cross for our sins and that he rose from the grave and is at the right hand of God, we are saved. And the transformation process of the Holy Spirit to have free course in our lives can now have work in our lives. Only because of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Changing our thought process, renewing our minds to think like him, act like him, be like him. Our walk changes, as does our talk, our desires, our very nature to transform and be like him. So it's not about our wants, our likes, our thoughts. It's not about what we would have done. It's not even about the experiences that takes place. But it is about his purpose, his design. His divine plan and intent for our lives. Everything changes when we seek his way. So God had a plan for Evangelina's life. In death, we with our carnal minds see the end. But his words tell us it's just the beginning. See, our new life begins when we accept Jesus. We dedicated Evangelina to the Lord and he honored our prayers by covering her with his blood. Now the real testament begins. For we who are in Christ do not mourn death as the world who is lost without any hope. No, we mourn in the loss, but for a moment. And in like manner, we celebrate life for the hope which is in Christ Jesus. In that Christ who died for our sin and with the weight of the world upon his shoulders, he then took up his life again. So then if he was resurrected, we then who are in Christ are resurrected with him. Oh, glory day. So the grave has lost its sin. Death has no victory. In this wise, we are no more, or in this wise, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Romans 8 says, Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do, but if you live by its dictates, you will die. 
But through the power of the Spirit, you will be put to death, and the deeds of your sinful nature you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. What's our future glory? What is our hope? What is Evangelina's hope? What is our hope in knowing that we see her? It says, or that we can see her again, it says that yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against his will, all creation is subject to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom. What shall we say then about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us the right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us, and he is sitting at the right place, the right hand of God, pleading now for us. Can anything separate us from the love of God? Does it mean that he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or are hungry or destitute or killed all the day long? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who's loved, who loved us. And Paul goes on to say, and I am convinced that, I, that nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus. Today, I want to remind you that your joy comes from the Lord. God bless you, Levi and McKenna. For the enduring of these moments, these past moments. And God bless you even the more for what is yet to come because you will be undergirded by the strength and the faith you have in Christ. He will sustain you because weeping may endure for a night, a moment, a season, but joy comes in the morning. Look up, beloved. See the salvation of the Lord. He will renew your strength. He is our hope. The day is coming when we may be reunited with those in the Lord who have gone before us, if we live by faith in Jesus as well. In conclusion, we in here and today, even as Evangelina's parents or loved ones, all have a choice to make. We must accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. We must repent of our sin. We must accept Jesus as Lord of our life, accepting him into our heart. For John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So I ask you today, do you believe? Are you prepared to join? If you really want to join in with Evangelina and her parents, you would take the same walk with them, with her parents, to love the Lord with all of your heart, to accept him into your heart, to repent of your sins and claim him as Jesus and Lord. I'm gonna ask you, because there's no better time than now to receive of the Lord. Would there be anyone who desires to have the Lord into your heart who would accept him and claim him today signify by raising hands amen is there one god bless you we're gonna pray father god we come to you lord with heavy hearts while we're trying to rejoice, we're still caught up in the memory and the sentiment of what you allowed us to experience, which is life with Evangelina, Elizabeth, Marie, Harper.
We're grateful, Father, for the moment that was shared. We're grateful for the time, O oh Lord, to support her mother and father. We're grateful, Lord, for the yet unknown understanding. But we thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding because even in this moment, we shall rejoice in you knowing that we can see her again. We can join with this family in helping to undergird them by strengthening them, loving on them, and reminding them that you hold Evangelina now. You hold Eva's heart. You hold her spirit. Our longing, Lord, is that you would undergird this family. Lord, that you would continue to embrace them with your compassion as only you know how to do. We thank you again for this moment in time. And we ask, Lord, that as we leave from this place, that we would never leave from your presence. And that you would remind us that you are very near as a present help in the time of trouble. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to now quickly transition to the committal service. Again, as we have gathered today to celebrate the life and mourn the death of Evangelina Elizabeth Marie Harper, we are thankful for the time that God has given us. So I looked upon the table, it's a beautiful spread, and it simply reminded me of being there even in the hospital room sharing. As I looked upon Eva, seeing her strength just as she lay there, we knew that her struggle was beyond what we could embrace. And as a mother and a father, only you could really appreciate the love to hand to her. Knowing that Jesus is here for you, he is our shepherd. He, he's there to satisfy our, all of our longings. And our declare is that he is our Lord. And it doesn't matter what we go through. During the moment of struggle is the hardest time to embrace that there's a peace on the other side. And yet, the Lord is right there to comfort, to undergird and to keep your focus on him. Weeping and deep may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of his righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. With relentless hope and tireless sacrifice, Eva's mother and father showed compassion. They stood by her side. They continued in prayer. They embraced valued support of family, friends, and the church as they cherished the life and beauty of spirit in their daughter Eva. Their commitment to show strength through adversity, exhibit faith and hope in God on her behalf is a strong testament of their own faith and resolve to trust God no matter what. This is an example of Jesus' message of love to us. See, his grace abounds to be our hope in the midst of darkness, victory in the face of defeat, strength in a place of weakness, and among other attributes, courage for fear through the battle of life relying on Jesus as our paraclete with love and compassion. McKenna and Levi, as you serve the Lord with greater commitment and servitude, you will come to know him in a greater measure as the only one who can appropriate the measure of grace to sustain you no matter what you face or the depth of your need, even now for the strength to endure this loss of evil. Know this, that Evangelina's testimony and commitment to serve and follow God's plan for her life 
manifested in you as you witnessed, or in her as you witnessed her submission to conception, her endurance through gestation, her will and obedience to life and birth, her race run of commitment and battle to live, and ultimately her surrender to life in return to God as her creator. Her service to her savior, Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, she ran her race well, and so much that it pleased the Father to welcome her, she's not home. What a powerful testimony to the depth and the will of a life to fully submit to the plan of God. Her faithfulness, her testament, and life in consecrated service will continue her radiance now in your lives. Moms, dads, grandparents, family, and friends. It is with great witness in the name of Jesus Christ that we now commit her body to rest, knowing that her spirit is now with the Lord, and in the confidence of certain hope to life eternal through Jesus Christ. He who will transform our lowly bodies that it may be conformed to his glorious bodies according to the work by which he is able to do, subdue all things to himself. Let us pray. Father God, we do thank you for the life that you have given unto Eva. And we understand, Lord, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the creator, Lord, of all things. And as your word reminds us there is a time given to everything under the sun. Nothing's new. So your will to receive Eva gave but a moment for us to enjoy her. Now, Lord, her parents need you to undergird them and keep them, even as you remind them, Lord, that they can see her again. We ask, Lord, that you would be their strength, their hope, their peace. Love them. And as this light goes on in their hearts, may they remember to give you the final measure of their faith. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. I would ask that you would join me in greeting the family with encouraging and love. And again, we thank you on behalf of the family for showing them a level of support, and they will still need you in the many coming days. God bless you.